Morning Revolution, and welcome to Good Morning Revolution. We're so happy to see everybody. We hope everybody had a great, great, great week. Um, I'm glad it's over. It's been a tough week. We're in the middle of a fun drive. Uh, the People's World is trying to raise 50 grand, and uh, we hope everybody goes to donate.peoplesworld.org and contributes. We're trying to get 500 people to give $100, 500 people to give $100. But whatever you can give, we will appreciate very, 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 very much. So hello to Rosanna and Sky and Anita. And not, Good morning. Uh, Good morning, Lee, Revolution. Michael, Michael's back. Michael ain't been in the office in two months. Michael, <laughs> glad to see you. How you doing this morning? Very good. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Very happy to see everybody. And it's been a big, big week. We made national news the other day. Uh, Rosanna, we made that. CNN says we're coup plotters. And that we're just like the white supremacists. Happy Black History Month. I got to say that before I say anything else, you know. This is African American History Month, and uh, it's, it's a great history of our people, and uh, which was just exemplified by the good people of Georgia a couple of weeks ago when they voted uh, to defeat the Republicans. And and uh, what is the name of the Reverend and new Senator Warnock? Warnock, yeah. Warnock and uh, the black and a Jewish senator from uh, Georgia. And the Communist Party's made a big contribution to our history. And, uh, and so we want to celebrate that in the course of the program. We also lost a great freedom fighter the other day, Anita Torres from the great state of Arizona of the salt of the earth labor struggle. Anita was an outstanding fighter in her own right. She was 94 years old. Wow. Another loss for uh, the working class and for the uh, party and for the Mexican-American people, for the American people in general. Um, so let's see. Rosanna, we were talking about CNN. <laughs> uh, did you read that story? I did. I did read this story. It's ridiculous and it's so sloppy. You know, I don't I don't consider myself a, a champion editor, but I don't know how they got how they got that story in other than, of course, it's, you know, just a way to attack the party because, you know, the party still has influence, even its small size. And uh, we still, you know, consider it a force to you know, to deal with or to be afraid of or whatever. So they want to lump us into something that's so ridiculous. And I don't know why they even allowed that research to come out. It's so, it's just, just ridiculous, you know. We didn't attack anyone. They attacked us in, in you know, in 1948. So it's just- Absolutely. Yeah, they, um, they, they took, the, I went back and looked at the sources um, mm -hmm. provided by the coup d'etat project, the, the group that, did the so-called research that, that CNN was using. Their evidence that we uh, carried off a coup was that um, our leaders were prosecuted under the Smith Act. Um, we were <laughs> accused of uh, intending to overthrow the government by violence. Mm -hmm. um, but in those trials, the prosecution and the judge specifically pointed out that there was no um, clear intent, there was no present danger of a coup, there was no plan, that it was just our existence that was a threat to the government. So, it was thinking, it was thinking Marxist yeah. thoughts, conspiring exactly. to think, to overthrow. And, There's, and uh, Anita, you talked, you had a dialogue with that. Well, I had a back and forth by email, because to me, as a social scientist, there was no way that these three or whatever it was, uh, uh, events could be classified together as one um, one kind of phenomenon. Uh, so I did challenge the uh, the the right the uh, Klein Research uh, Center, and I got a, an email back from Scott Althaus, who said that um, they have a, a code book and they have their categories. But I didn't find anything. I mean, maybe Scott, you found something. I didn't find anything where they said what CNN said they said, which was, you know, that there's been three similar events and these are the three. I didn't only, find that. The only reference I found in their code book to their, mm -hmm. their data set to the, uh, to who's in the US was to us. 
um, oh. well, not only not only that, but people were who were reading that article, people outside of the party, even you know, on the center, right, whatever. They would Google 1948 communist plot to overthrow the government. They're like, I'm not getting anything. I'm getting something in Czechoslovakia. This didn't happen. This isn't exist. So there was this huge outcry of people who weren't even affiliated with our party saying, this is fake news. You know, this is a lie. So it was really refreshing to see that because this generation isn't falling for the red baiting like, you know, our grandfather. And that's part of the problem, uh, Michael. You know, you know, the Trump, Trump trumpeted fake news, but he didn't create it. You know, there, there's been this, you know, uh, policy by the news media for, I don't know, 10, 15, not to even report news. It's all about, you know, entertainment and infotainment and focusing on, on things that don't have anything to do with anything. And, and people aren't stupid. Right. They realize it. And uh, it it's just makes matters worse. So on the one hand, you got CNN playing a decent role in the fight against Trump and then they turn around and bite you. Mm -hmm. Turn around and bite you and uh, okay. Big it's a reminder, it's a now, reminder huh? for us. It's a reminder yeah. that anti-communism can, you know, is alive and well, <laughs> or not well, alive but, and well. but it's it, there's still attempts, yeah. And then it, it's yeah. the road that, that fascism uses to get into the mainstream. Mm -hmm. That's the danger. Anti-communism and uh, racism, uh, okay. over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so enough about CNN. Michael, you're writing a story about the Twitter response. Uh, uh, Tony Pesanovsky wrote another story responding to it. It's at peoplesworld.org and cpusa.org. We encourage everybody to go take a look at it, share the article. Share the wealth. Let people know about this fakery by uh, a CNN. Now, the other thing that happened uh, this morning at 5.30, the Senate passed the uh, uh, budget proposed by the president and the vice president for that $1.7 billion a, a package. Uh, the vice president, uh, Mrs. Harris, uh, Ms. Harris, Vice President Harris, <laughs> cast the deciding vote, Anita. And yes. uh, so what happens next? It, it goes through the house. I really don't understand the rigmaroles of that. Oh dear. Uh, process. This is a budget reconciliation process. Exactly. Right? So it doesn't have, I mean, I, I, does that mean it's a done deal? Actually, Scott, you might know better than me what the next process is, but well, I think they're moving really aggressively, which is what they have to do. And they didn't, you know, stick around to wait and you know, play around with the Republicans. With, with budget reconciliation, from what I understand, is that um, there's a whole period of amendments that get added to it. And, and um, Republicans are threatening to just pile on amendment after amendment after amendment after amendment. To, well, they uh, did that yesterday and they finished okay. that. That was oh, did they? Okay. Yeah, the marriage, the, the, the amendment of fun and something like that. Votorama, yeah. Votorama, something like that. And then they finished at 5.30 and Harris came in and, uh, and cast the vote. And now it goes to the, to the House. But minimum wage, they took it out. Mm. They took it out. Voice vote. It wasn't even a roll call, but it was a voice vote. Mm -hmm. And they took out the fifth, but Bernie Sanders says, the hell with y'all, we're putting it back in through the budget reconciliation <laughs> process. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you say. He said the people of, because this was this Republican from uh, Iowa said, it's going to hurt small business in Iowa. And so Bernie said, poor people in Iowa need $15 just like everybody else. And mm -hmm. so now, now Manchin says from uh, West Virginia, Right. He wants it to be eleven dollars an hour. So here's my proposal, Rosanna, to Mr. Manchin. You live on eleven dollars right. an hour yeah. in, in West Virginia, and then you know, tell us how you feel. Do that for a year, and then come back and take the remainder of your salary and do donate it right. to the people's world. Two families, the three families who are on uh, public assistance. I Got agree. I Great. think definitely let let them try to live on on that salary and see see what they can do with it. You know, we 
we in Los Angeles were fighting for the, you know, 15 uh, to, to raising the minimum wage. And it's the same kind of arguments. Oh, small, it's going to affect small businesses. And, you know, people are going to move out. The businesses are going to shut down. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it hasn't happened that way. So it's just, they're just, you know, a way to get it out, to, to get out of uh, paying that wage. But it actually is better for the economy overall. Exactly. You know, and and there are other ways to help small businesses. Right. I don't think this has any, anything to do with small businesses at all, because um, if the government wanted to help small businesses, it could, um, you know, provide uh, payroll tax exemptions or subsidies to um small businesses that are hiring in their communities. It could, um, you know, provide zero interest loans. There are all kinds of things that could be done to help small business. Um, but to say that uh, workers have to pay the price for the existence of small businesses is, is, is nonsensical. Mm -hmm. Well, the important thing is that it's going to come back up and, uh, and, and uh, they're saying you got to go big it's really important to pass a big package now rather than a smaller one because people are hurting and desperate and, and in need of help. So we're going to see what happens. Uh, now I want to uh, do a quick, uh, oh, before I, I want to do a lightning round. So I want y'all uh, to start thinking about quick answers, yes or no, but not, they kick the QAnon representative from Georgia off the education uh, uh, committee. Yes. Good thing you're an educator. We've got two educators here. Actually, we've got three. Three, three oh. educators. Actually, we got five educators. <laughs> so we're all working class intellectuals who are trying to, but professionally trained. Um, Scott, was that a good thing? You're a teacher. Uh, yeah. I mean, Anything that gets somebody who is completely disconnected from science and reality and under the sway of white supremacy and fascism, anything that gets them away from education policy is a good thing. <laughs> Anita? And threatening the life, I think it's a good thing that they got uh, her off those committees. She's threatened the life of uh, other uh, of her colleagues. I, I think that's just on. She was holding up a, a assault rifle and pointing it at uh, AOC and uh, uh, the other two, the squad. Right. I mean, I mean, considering what our uh, our uh, comrades back in the fifties or forties got arrested for, she would be. Uh, she's guilty of. You know, she actually did advocate the overthrow of, uh, of the government, the duly elected government. So yeah, I think that they should throw the book at her. And they did. And I, I think the Republicans are going to try to get um, back at them as soon as they have the opportunity. But, uh, but I think it was the right thing to do. OK, so here's my lightning round question. I thought that was it. They passed the package. They passed the package. Is that left <laughs> enough for you, Scott? And is, it, it should be, should the goal of the of our movement, the broad working class movement and the left, should we push the administration to the left? Is that what we should be doing? Scott? No. Yes the, or no? The administration is... I'm not hearing a why. Right? Our, our goal is to fight for the needs of the people and the right of the people to impose those needs as a program. Um, so yes or no? I, that was my answer. <laughs> oh, you jumped around the question. Anita, yes or no? What, what's the, I mean, the question is, is that enough? The 1.7? Uh, no, we need, we, we also need a voting uh, rights act to really expand the, uh, the democratic rights of, of the working class in this, in this, and I don't think they're going to be able to do that without the, uh, with, with the filibuster still in, intact. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's not enough. We have to keep pushing. The question is, should we be trying to push Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to the left? Rosanna, yes or no? Uh, <laughs> that's a tricky question. I would, I would say no, because we want to push for people's ish on, on the issues of people that are concerning people. That would be my sure. short yeah. answer. 
Okay, what about you, uh, Mr. Michael? I think, and no, it's not enough. And I think there's even enough Democrats in Congress, like Cori Bush, she had a wonderful tweet that said 1700 is, is, does not equal 2000, you know, that 2000 <laughs> was what they were advocating for. And so, no, but imagine if we had a headline, I, I always say this when people ask why we support certain reforms, imagine the headlines, Communist Party doesn't want, you know, economic stimulus package. Of course, we accept it, you know, but we always want more. We want to expand it, expand it, expand it as much as possible. And so I don't think it's a question of putting, as Rosanna, as, as Rosanna said, um, I don't think it's a question of pushing uh, Biden and Harris to the left but just always advocating for more and uh, building you know, revolutionary potential around this fight for the most um, progressive reforms possible to help people, yeah. I say no. My answer is our goal is not to push them to the left, but to focus on the issue. Rosanna's right, focus on PRO Act, focus on voting rights, Act, focus on Green New Deal, focus on, and to move the people to fight for, and they're going to respond based on pressure, not based on their individual uh, personalities. So the next question, lightning round, is it enough to focus on the Biden program? Scott, yes or no? No. Anita, yes or no? No. Rosanna, yes or no? No, not enough. Michael. No, our program is better. Right, Read our right, party hell program. No. <laughs> I go to student debt, Michael. It's not part of the, it's not part of the uh, program. Plus, I see that they left the US Embassy in Jerusalem. That's right. I mean, my, uh, Scott, I mean. Yeah, no, not all of these, we, we cannot, fight for democracy here and the empowerment of the people here on a consistent basis if we're not also fighting against um, US imperialism and, and its deadly impact on other nations, right? The, the, the struggle for democracy is worldwide. You can't be you know, supporting the, the unelected pretender uh, Juan Guaido in, in Venezuela uh, and then talking about you know, the, the sanctity of elections in the United States. It's, well, not only he he went back on a few promises. Student debt was one, but also immigration. You know, I, I watch at our house. We watch Telemundo. You know, Telesur, Univision. You know, Spanish news. And it's interesting how the the day after Biden won, it went from you know yes, anti-Trump, anti-Trump, anti-Trump to because this is mostly for the immigrant community here in the United States. To Biden's not doing what he said. He's not there. They're still family separated. The deportations are continuing. What's what's going on? And so you know we have to hold them accountable and push for, you know, what our program is, our, you know. What about the right wing now? Is, is the coup over? Uh, 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 Michael, do you think the coup is over? I think the coup is over. I'm, um, but I think they are preparing, the, at least the most extreme right sectors of the ruling class, uh, GOP, I think they're preparing for the next Trump figure to come along. It could be this Marjorie, you know, uh, Congresswoman. Uh, they've talked about Tom Cotton from Arkansas. Um, so I, I think it's over for now, but I do think the attempts to, uh, you know, attack democracy again and rule from a position of the minority, it's still in the GOP's playbook. God, is the coup over? The, you know, you talked, Joe, about, about a, a right-wing mass movement. That has not gone away. It's still very much present. Uh, there's still the possibility of other, um, you know, insurrections, attempts at, at violence. Um, so it depends on how you define a coup. Is it the punctual, you know, invasion of the Capitol or is it the, the, the press of this right-wing mass movement funded and organized by, as Michael said, the most reactionary section of the ruling class? The extreme right threat is not gone and it has to be dealt with um, politically, legally, ideologically. Um, we read that, that fight, I think, is, is, has just kicked up into a, into a higher gear. Mm -hmm. There is a anti-democratic party in power in state government, in the Supreme Court, in Congress. Did you see what the vote was, Rosanna, uh, on that Congresswoman? Only 10 Republicans voted to get her. The majority of them 
-hmm. in the Senate. Well, not maybe not in the Senate. The Senate is a little bit they took issue, but in the House, they're still supporting that kind of nonsense. And uh, so, uh, yeah, definitely, we have to be mindful of all. You know, it's not over. You know, it's never over because the capitalists are still in power. And you know we're always going to be fighting the right because they're the opposition. They're not just going to give up their power, you know. Like, oh, okay, here you go. No, it's not going to like. It's not even going to be like like that. And even if the majority of the people, even when the majority of the people demand a change, there are still going to be. There's still that opposition, and we see it in Latin America and in other countries. You know, there's still this opposition attempts to to take back their power, but. You know, it all depends on the, the movement that we build. How Rosanna, strong and I like that point, Rosanna, just because it reminds me of when I was um, talking to a, a comrade in Cuba about how, you know, some people have difficulty understanding the fight against fascism here and why we as a communist party, we always emphasize it. And he laughed and he said, you know, the fight against the extreme right continues even after the revolution. Even mm -hmm. here in right, Cuba, yeah. you have these religious nuts, essentially, who are, you know, nothing about gay marriage and, you know, oh, we want the plantations back. We want our land back. We don't want to be at the beaches with people of color and so forth. And so it continues even after, you know, the, the establishment of socialism. So exactly. that's a good point. Well, it took 2,000 years for negative, bad ideas, misogyny, racism, homophobia, patriarchy. Uh, and so on and so to develop. So it's going to take a little while <laughs> to get rid of it. So <laughs> the far right is gearing up for when they want to win back the, the House of Representatives in 22. And they're, uh, they're going to do it by gerrymandering um, using this 2010 census that comes out of this, uh, uh, the 2020 census. Um, and I understand that Republicans are in charge of redistricting in 173 or so congressional districts, whereas the Democrats are in charge of redistricting less than 100 uh, districts. So it's- um, Is that determined by the state, Anita? Yes, the state, the state governments do those redrawings. And uh, it's been uh, estimated that the Republicans could win back the House just through their redistricting, unless we pass this um, Voting Rights Act, which would um, prevent gerrymandering nationally. So I think that's why that's really important. And also- Didn't Obama local... and, and Holder, the former attorney general have some initiative around redistricting? I wonder what it, that would be a Eric, good article for- Eric Holder. People's, yeah, Eric Holder, uh, for uh, peoplesworld.org. Well, um, we're gonna have to look into that. We're gonna have to look into more uh, looking at the role of our history during Black History Month, uh, uh, during our next program. Uh, so until then, we want to ask everybody to stay strong and stay safe and uh, stay in the fight. Call your congressman, call your senator, push for that package. We need it. It's not going to come easy. It's not going to come easy, y'all. You're going to have to fight for it because there's some people wavering. Got to keep the pressure on. Take care, and we'll see everybody next week. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yes. Bye.